gonna need to fix that. We're gonna do it right now. So here's what I got going on. I am currently doing a kitchen remodel. I tore out all the cabinets and I tore out the drywall and the insulation. Make sure you follow along, subscribe to see a whole bunch of videos on this, including a giant time lapse at the end. But this is what I discovered while I was doing this. A whole bunch of rot. The first thing you want to do is determine where the problem is, what caused this, and I think all of this is water. And I know that at one point this was repaired. I was looking in the basement randomly while the sink was running at one point, and I just saw water pouring out of this right here. Basically right in this area, that pipe was all rotted out and it was just pouring out. So that was fixed. But I think this was leaking for a long time before that. I don't think that was the, the main cause. I think the main cause was that my roof was leaking. You can see this vent changes to four inch cast iron right here. And you can see evidence of water damage all the way up here. It was probably leaking from there, came down to the strapping, was riding along the drywall, got to the two by fours here, and then obviously was just riding down this vent and just causing years and years of damage down here. And I think all of this black is staining. It doesn't smell, it's not furry. It doesn't have any of the symptoms of being black mold. At least I don't think it's active if it did have mold anywhere here. So the first thing you wanna do is stop the water from coming in. This is all completely dry. This was fixed probably when I did the roof and definitely when I did this. So this is all completely dry. So that is a check, that's done. So now what I have to do is fix all this and I wanna at least get something solid under this right here, since that is supporting all of this above the window. So my plan is to, little by little, peel these layers back. I have underlayment here, and then the subfloor under that, we'll see the extent of the damage and kind of go from there. I'm not really going to know until I start taking it apart. So that's what we're going to do. Now, if we take a look in the basement, this is the crawl space where the kitchen is. And you can see back there, all that black. Back there, where all that black is, that is where the leak was. So that was water coming from the kitchen sink. So there's probably food and everything else. So I'm gonna clean that up when I take all this apart. But the good thing is, looking at all this, it looks like there's no rot right there. At least I hope. And it's hard to see on camera right now, but everything looks pretty good. Except those pipes. Those pipes don't look great. Luckily, that's all getting redone. First thing I'm gonna do is get this right out of my way. All this plumbing is being replaced, not by me, uh, by a plumber, but I can tear it out of here. I just can't put it back in. So, just gonna loosen this up. And I'm just gonna lose my bit and it's gonna fall right in the basement. Uh, good start. Just loosen that. And there is water in here, so I'm just gonna be careful. Go throw this away. Next thing I'm gonna do is support this vent because I have no idea how it's actually staying up. I think it might be hanging from the top plate here as it goes up to four inch, but if it is supported at all down where that rod is and I start taking it apart, I don't want this to drop at all. So I have a clamp. I'm gonna clamp it right here and attach it probably to this stud right here. I have to bend this just so I can get it around here. I think the way I'm actually gonna do this is I'm gonna take a screw and screw it in right back here where this clamps together instead of using this because I have all this right here that isn't gonna do me much good. So I'm just gonna bend this back. 
and I should be able to get a screw right there. Nice. I'm going to take a metal blade and just cut this right here so it doesn't interfere with anything. Obviously, I don't need all of this. Perfect. All right, let's start digging in here. First step, I'm going to take off this underlayment. I'm not really going to know what I'm dealing with until I just start taking it apart. So I'm going to go about 12 inches back right here and there's a seam right here so I will cut to that my line here hopefully you can see it just past here if it's not perfect that's okay and right here I'm just gonna hack this out because I don't want to deal with that pipe right now yeah, I think it's 5 eighths. So I'm going to set the depth of my saw, cut that out, and rip it up. Okay, so I got that piece up and these boards are good. This board is decent, but this is probably the one that I am gonna tear out. I think this one goes all the way to the outside here. So if you look over here, you can see these nails and that means that there's a joist right here. So what I'm gonna end up doing is cutting this half on here because I think this is all good over here. Obviously this is not. So if I cut this half on here, cut this out half on there, and then I find something good over here, which it looks like, if you look at the nails here, there's a joist right there. You can even see the nails going down into it. So I need to find a solid joist. Hopefully those aren't rotted away at all. I will find out, but I need to find a good one. And I think the good one is going to be the next one, which these are 16 inches on center. So the next one is going to be measuring from those nails over here past this. So I'm going to cut this back probably to about here. Continue this line this way, take this plywood up. I might as well take these pieces out. Um, and I'm gonna end up supporting this because as you can see, this is sitting on that. Now this isn't the only thing supporting this. It's not just one thing that supports stuff like this in a house. It's, you know, the sheathing, it's everything tied together. Everything works as a unit. But just to be safe, I'm going to take a piece from over there, sit it on top of here, and go over to this stud where it should be solid down there. So I'll do that there, cut this plywood out, and start cutting these out. And I'm not going to save this plywood because it looks kind of nasty. Might as well get new stuff. Throw this right in the dumpster. Okay. That's the new plan. Your plan kind of takes shape as you go into stuff like this. Moving on. Oh, 16 inches. Going to be about here. So I'm going to go past a little bit. It doesn't really matter how much. I'll go 10 inches in this. 10 inches. Mark that line. this line over so I can just put one piece back here hopefully that's less than 48 yep
piece isn't too bad. Now, I'm gonna carefully get this plywood out of here. Yeah, I don't like that. One little slip and I'm gonna have water going everywhere. Luckily, this stuff seems pretty old and brittle. Before I go too crazy here cutting stuff out, I wanna support these a little better, make sure they don't move around. Looks like they're attached with clips from underneath, so I'm just gonna tap these screws down. Then I'm gonna take a two by four block and hold it even with the piece that's staying. I'm cutting this piece out and I'm gonna put some screws in that. This is just a temporary thing. I wanna see if I can get this flooring out of the way so that I can get these tight to that block. There's one. And I'm gonna take a clip and attach it right here. Again, just temporary. Okay. This is the one that's really drooping down down there. So if I can pull this up a little bit just to get this piece out of the way for what I'm cutting, something like that. Okay, those are secure. Let's start on this side. I'm gonna take my speed square, half on where these nails are. I wanna do this for the two by four and the board underneath. And I'm gonna try and make a nice cut here. Basically the new piece of wood is gonna butt right to this after I cut it. So I wanna try and cut that straight. That wood looks great, so I'm not worried about that having any damage in it. It's really not even that bad. I mean, you're not supposed to be able to do this, but that's good. Now on this side, I'm gonna do the same thing. Try and make a nice square cut. Maybe I can cut these nails under here. I'm trying not to cut that stud at all. I went into the plate with that. So let's see if we got it. Okay, two by four is out. And the bottom of these actually look really great. They feel really great. I know you can't feel them, but I think I'm going to leave these the way they are. Even this back here is just a little damaged, but I think it's worth just leaving it. Instead, the, the option would be to replace the whole thing, and I really don't want to do that. What I can do is cut this half on, cut this half on over here, hope that everything down there is solid, and I'm gonna cut this pipe out, and get it out of the way, and then patch all this back in. Now I'm gonna cut this half on, and just before I do that, I wanna make sure I am pretty much exactly half on. So there is a crack right here. I can kind of see, but what I'll do is break this little piece off here. There's more flooring going over it, so I'm not, not too concerned. Now I can see in there exactly where the joist is. So I'm gonna cut it right here, which is half on. So mark that line and cut it. Okay, that is
is loose. Let's do the other side. So it looks like I'm gonna cut this two by four back so it's exactly half on. It looks like almost even with that stud. I want to get this pipe out of the way. I'm going to end up cutting it up here, right below that clamp. And under here, I'm just going to loosen this because that's PVC all the way down. So the plumber can tie in to this, but I'm going to loosen that and get this disconnected from there. And then I can cut the pipe and get it right out of my way. There's my bit. I'll try not to lose my bit this time. This is not easy. You might want to start with the right size. Yeah, that's the right size, isn't it? I know you can't see what I'm doing, but try and imagine. It's not fun. New plan. I'm just going to cut this. Damn it. Try not to go through the outside of the house. Well, that took way longer than I wanted it to. Yay! Let's take a look. I got my pokey stick and I'm gonna poke. Joist in good shape. Joist out here. In good shape. This, not so great. But that's okay. This, good shape. This, not so great, but that's okay. If I want to, I can fix that from the outside later. But the thing about rot is as long as you fix the problem, get it dry, it's not gonna get any worse. A little bit right here. Good right here. Probably just a little bit. I think this is solid. Probably got a little bit there. Probably caught it just in time. That's not worth tearing out a piece of the sill for a couple inches. All this looks good. Just stained. The bottoms of the two by fours, these are actually in good shape. Same with this one. So I'm happy with that. I think we can put this back together. No ants, no termites. No more water. Just clean this up a little more. Start filling it back in. Let's clean it up. Hey, I got a piece of three quarter plywood and I just notched out for these. These are coming out, but what I'm gonna do is just get this piece in there. Then I can do the two by four under here and then this piece I'll wait to do until those pipes are gone. Kind of do it at the same time that all the plumbing happens. 
So let's try and get this piece in here to start. Let's see how I did, just dry fit it, meaning no glue. Oh yeah, it's gonna be tricky. Oh, maybe not. That is gonna go in nice. Okay, so I'll take it back out. Now I'm gonna glue up each of these joists. Load it right up. And now, I can put my piece in, for real. Little tap. Look at that. Now I'm gonna screw this into place with some two inch construction screws. Get rid of the joists. Suck it right down. So here's something you run into all the time working on old houses. The old two by fours are bigger, meaning they're thicker or wider than new two by fours. These are actually about an inch and five eighths, maybe a little more. So if I just put a regular two by four in there, I'm gonna have a gap. So underneath the two by four, what I'm gonna do first is use a piece of eighth inch underlayment. And then it'll make it nice and tight. It's gonna be really tight getting it in there, but that's what we want. I'm not gonna glue this. It's not really necessary. Besides, if I can't get this two by four in there for whatever reason, I'll be able to take it out and it won't be a mess. Like I said, it's gonna be tight. That is definitely how we want it though. Make sure it's even Steven. That is perfect. Now I'm gonna take some three inch screws and attach this bottom plate or sill plate, whatever you want to call it. Try and get right into that joist. Put a couple screws in the two by fours. Hopefully I don't split them. I'll go into this stud because that one's in better shape. So the three quarter plywood is half on that joist, on there all the way, half on there. Two by fours sitting on top of that. The joists underneath are solid. Luckily, there was no rot. I got some screws in each of these studs. And now I can take off my wicked awesome support structure here. Let's drop it like it's hot. One stinky stinky. All set. Ready to move on. Let me know how you think I did in the comments down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can click hereish and hereish and check those out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely consider it. I got plenty more content on the way. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Sneak peek.